Welcome back. Yes, um, let's continue our conversation around the election, road to 2023. Uh, let's begin to investigate issues around um, ensuring that political parties and, uh, 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 and campaigns are issue, issue, issues driven as against uh, what we see playing out, intimidation, uh, uh, looking at people's... Uh, uh, you know, intimidations and um, yeah. character, and, uh, assassination. character assassination and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. These are a few concerns that um, uh, this has raised, raised um, going, going towards the, the next election. Uh, we've been joined by Dumebi Ifan Ichuku, who is a media entrepreneur. He's joining us from our Buja studios uh, this uh, fantastic morning. Dumebi, Dumebi, oh, did I just say yes? Dumebi, yes. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I don't know if I can hear you clearly. Good morning once again. Good morning. I'm sure can you hear me now? Yeah, but um, uh, maybe he's live with us and I'm sure he can hear us. Uh, certainly a bright day in the city, in the nation's capital today, isn't it, maybe? We're hoping that uh, we can hear we could hear it maybe just more clearly. Okay. Uh, all right, maybe. Um, let's start yes. this way. How would you want to assess uh, uh, campaigns going on so far uh, across polit political parties? What would be your assessment of, um, of campaigns going on so far? Well, first of all, I would like to state exp expressly that... Um, I'm not too impressed with the quality of uh, campaigns currently ongoing in the country because um, several of these political parties are not addressing the issues that are plaguing this country. They are, not as, uh, they are not addressing them frontally. Out of the entire lot, I can only say that there's about one candidate who has been able to, you know, respond and detail his plans for most of the uh, problems the country is facing. You see, at this point in time, Nigeria is currently, you know, heading towards an abyss. In as much as it's not uh, very palatable to say or very pleasant to say, it is the truth. Nigeria is a country of, is a multi-ethnic and a culturally diverse country made up of 36 autonomous states and um, with a population of 218 people, 218 million people according to UNICEF. So where we stand currently economically, our inflation rate as at this month currently stands at 20.77%. Our youth uh, unemployment rate is about 33%. Youth unemployment is about 42%. This is according to the National Bureau of Statistics. And, uh, you know, I don't even have to talk about our current exchange rate. You can see that it, is, uh, it, it, has been progressing, it has been progressing upwards since the beginning of the, of the year. So there are a lot of issues that need to be handled. What I'm seeing from most campaigns is, especially from the ruling, from the, from the ruling party, from the frontline opposition party, is majorly character assassination, resort to cheap insults, you know, when you have a big country like this, you have a party accusing another party of having a, 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 a homosexual tendencies. These kind of things are not things that should be, uh, you know, should be presented in the public space at this point in time. We need to have campaigns that are issue-based. You, you want to become the president of the country next year. What, are you go what, is, what, what is your manifesto? What are you going to do to solve these problems? I mean... The, the, the World Bank, a recent statistic from the World Bank shows that four out of every ten Nigerians live below the poverty line. As at 2018-2019, we had about 82.1 million Nigerians, live, million poor Nigerians living below the poverty line. As at today, there is a 14.7% increase. We have about 95.1 million Nigerians living beneath the poverty line. Now, if you add one and two together, 95.1 million out of 218, that's almost half the population. What are you going to do to tackle this problem? What are your plans for human capital development? 
What are your plans for insecurity? The Global Peace Index, as at uh, 2021, ranked Nigeria 146th out of 163 countries in the world. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we are ranked 39th out of 44. These are not good numbers. These are terrible. So, if, if someone is campaigning to be president of Nigeria, we need to look at one, his antecedents. We need to look at his capacity. We need to look at his ability to withstand the pressures of a top job like being president, of the top job of being president of the giant of Africa. So it is very important that campaigns are issue-based. Not talking about uh, ethnicity, not talking about religion. No. Is this person able to handle the rigors of this job? So that is, that is where I would like to stop for now. Okay, so do maybe while that may be the case, we do know the way the Nigerian is approaching the election. We're having comments of all of these. The, the, the major issue for the APC was a Muslim-Muslim ticket as against the candidates themselves uh, when they were actually going forward. Uh, before then, uh, when it was even at primary levels, many were looking at you know, the position of Tinubu as against um, Yemi Wesibajo as vice president and you know, the mentor-mentee situation as against what both individuals will present to the people. So it appears this has always been the way we approach issues. This has always been the way we, we look at issues. How do you think we can change that narrative? Well, first of all, first of all, the way we can change that narrative is by educating the people on the importance of electoral participation. Educating the people on the importance of hiring of hiring competent individuals into office let me give you an example the price of uh, the, the food inflation rate in nigeria today is about 23.3 percent prices of goods and services have been on a steady increase since the beginning of this year it's been trending upwards 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 things are getting more and more expensive if you go to the market and you go to buy, let's say, a bag of rice. A bag of rice now is about uh, 50 something thousand naira, which is way higher than it was as of 2014 when we used to get it for 8 to 10,000 naira. Now, when you go to the market to buy a bag of rice, the same amount they will give a Yoruba man is the same amount they will give an Aosa man. It's the same amount they will give an ethnic man. It's the same amount they will give a Muslim. It's the same amount they will give a Christian. The country as it currently stands is in a very, very terrible situation. I can't overemphasize this. So if we are going to educate the people, we need to, we need to approach them with this kind of information. Let them understand that that vote they cast determines not just their future, but the future of their children and the future of their children yet unborn. Also, we must, we must encourage unity in the country because when you have a leadership that is, you know, built upon, you know, tribal sentiments, built upon religious sentiments, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it, it creates a climate of tension amongst the people. So we must ensure the only way, the only true path to solving this problem is to keep enlightening the people, which is why I am very happy for the, you know, advent of social media, the wide adoption of social media. Unlike before, when information channels were just restricted to newspapers and magazines. Now we have social media. You can get information at the tip of your fingers. I will give you another example as to why there is progress in this uh, aspect. Now, prior to prior elections, before let's say the boom of social media in Nigeria, which was around uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, Nigerian youths were not too 
uh, interested in the electoral process, in the way, you know, in the, in, the, in the aspect of governance. But right now, in fact, this particular election has the highest percentage of youth participation. Why? Because social media has played a major role in letting young people know the true state of things in the country. Things have gotten so bad that right now, Nigerian youths have no chance, no choice, but to get interested, but to participate. Because I, when I knew that something was something new, like I knew that a change was coming in this particular context, was when during the primaries, I noticed that the word delegates was trending on uh, Twitter. I said, wow. I checked the conversations. About 80 to 85 percent were young people. Very young people within the ages of 18 to 35. I said, this is good. Like I had friends, young people calling me to ask, ah, how is this determined? What is the process of becoming a delegate? What are delegates? You know, it shows that when the people are enlightened, they make better decisions. All right, um, maybe but you could also see that um, even the parties themselves, the political parties themselves, are cashing in on uh, these um, what we term an anomaly within the political space. Uh, talking about um, campaign of um, character assassination as against um, issue-based uh, uh, campaigning. If you look at uh, uh, the spokespersons for. Most of these parties, you could tell that there seem to be people that are skilled in the act of either manipulation or convincing, and not in uh, uh, the, 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 not, not in the act of being able to communicate and be understood. Uh, so maybe we should begin this conversation uh, from the party. We should take this campaign to the parties themselves. That even whilst they are trying to uh, select a point. A nominate spokesperson, it shouldn't be people that are skilled in acts of uh, manipulations or skilled in the act of uh, uh, bad mouthing others, rather, people that can actually communicate. What do you think, maybe? First of all, I would like to state very expressly that when you look, you see, you, when you look at parties that engage in character assassination, let's take, for example, in this, uh, this electoral season, it's largely because they have nothing to offer, or maybe they are trying to sell a defective candidate. What do I mean? You know, they know that, most of these parties know that their candidates are nothing to write home about when it comes to analyzing their antecedents, when it comes to critically looking into their past, looking into their pedigree, looking into their qualifications. So when they come out to say they want to do this and this and that, the people will question them. You have been in so-so -so place at so-so -so time at so-so -so, uh, 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 period. What did you do? You are telling us in your manifesto that you are going to do this, you are going to do that, you are going to do this, you are going to do that. Okay, prior... Prior to this, when you were holding so, so so office, this was what you said and this was what you said. Were you able to fulfill them? Were you able to do them? So, they are, like you rightfully said, they are very manipulative. They know what they are doing. You understand? And they are doing so because there is a desperate attempt to hoodwink the electorate, to cover up their excesses, to cover up their defectiveness. So, I will advise Nigerians, if you are going to select a candidate you will support, do well to look into his past, his antecedents, what he has been able to achieve concretely when he or she occupied public office. We don't need people telling us that this person and that person are having an amorous homosexual relationship. We don't need somebody telling us that this person is a, 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 a thief. What we are asking is, what is your plan? 
Are you medically fit enough to actualize what you have stated in your manifesto? Nigeria at this point in time is facing a plethora of problems. We can't afford to be listening to parties or candidates who come and tell, who are just engaging in insults. It is too immature. We need people who will tell us the truth. This is where Nigeria is. This is where Nigeria is. This is what we will practically do to get Nigeria out of this terrible situation. We need a president that will operate with what is and not what should be. Because if you operate with what should be, you will make mistakes. Tell us your critical plan. We must know that you understand what is on ground. You are a realist. Nigeria's biggest problem today is insecurity. According to the NCBI, as at December 31st, 2020, 2.73 million Nigerians are internally displaced. I'm sure that figure has significantly increased by now because this, the, the, the rate of insecurity has not experienced any significant uh, uh, growth. Has, I'm sorry, has not experienced any significant uh, 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 improvement. The security situation of the country has not witnessed any significant improvement. The kidnappings are still going on. The killings are still going on. If we don't get it right in 2023, I am telling you without missing words, we may not have a country within the next few years. So I think Nigerians should focus more on scrutinizing the manifesto and the personality of the individual putting himself forward to rule this country, to lead this country. Do maybe, well, yes, that's what we hope uh, would be the conversation. But campaigns have started yeah. uh, fully now, and candidates are going across the country. Yes. Now, we are seeing attacks yes. on convoys of some okay. candidates. We have seen attacks on supporters yes. of other candidates. And this is limiting the yes. conversations that we can possibly have on the plans of these yes. individuals. But aside that, mm. we are also seeing attempts by media organizations to have candidates come forward and discuss their plans exactly interchangeably amongst themselves. Uh, some candidates are now becoming even more frustrated than others who are saying they keep showing up, but the major candidates uh, who are of the current government and the previous government appear not to be interested uh, in showing up for such debates, such town hall meetings as a recent case uh, points. What do you think about this? And um, you possibly say that recent debates have not decided who won the elections in Nigeria, probably so maybe they are justified to avoid it altogether. But what do you say about this, this trend of avoiding you know, debates? Why do you think they are doing it? And how do we get them to be a part of such conversations first of all like i said in my previous response you see when you have an individual shying away telling you that he can do this and do that and when it is time to quiz him on uh, you know what he said he can do and you find him evading you find him not being able to come forward to defend what he has said he would do i think that any 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 human being with a, a, a right you know with a very reasonable faculty can tell that something is off you know nigeria at this point in time can't afford to have a candidate who is not confident enough to defend his or her manifesto in the public space you see then you also mentioned, uh, I think you asked a question about uh, the fact that uh, uh, Nigerians will, uh, if, I, if I get it right, if um, Nigerians will go to vote or so, based on, uh, sorry, can you come again with the second question you asked? Yes, debates are not necessarily affecting mm. the results. And so possibly why the candidates are avoiding attending such debates. Okay. 
Okay, I get you now. First off, I think this election will be very, very different compared to previous elections because of the new electoral act and uh, the new guidelines established by uh, INEC, the electoral umpire. Now with the BVAS and the IREV, that is the uh, bimodal voter, uh, uh, if I'm correct, the BVAS, it's a new development in Nigeria's electoral uh, process. And uh, it's evident, even from the Oshun State, the last gubernatorial elections in Oshun State, where results are being transmitted uh, uh, live, you know, in real time, it has greatly, greatly, greatly reduced the ability of, uh, you know, dangerous politicians uh, to manipulate the process. So this election will be entirely different, provided the electoral umpire is, uh, plants his foot on the ground and says, no, no, there will be no, uh, 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 there will be no, you know, there will be no compromise. The election will be free and fair. And whoever the people vote is who will, you know, emerge as the president of the country. And I would also like to use this as an opportunity to call on that, on INEC, to please ensure, for the sake of the unity of this country, for the sake of the future of this country, for the sake of the entire Nigerian people, to ensure that the process is truly free and fair. They must put modalities in place to ensure that desperate politicians do not manipulate the process. There have been allegations of politicians stockpiling money, you know, to effect vote buying in a situation whereby they can't, you know, there no, there's no more use of ballot papers. Now it is just straight upload. So if they find out that they can't manipulate as the way they used to before, they resort to vote buying. Please, if you know that you want a good country for yourself, your children, and your children yet unborn, I plead with you, the Nigerian people, my wonderful Nigerian people, this is a critical time in our uh, uh, country's uh, 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 history. This is a critical time to determine the path and future of our country. Don't vote with the stomach. Vote with your children, your children yet unborn in mind. Vote with, 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 with the ideology that we need to transcend, the, we need to come out of the pit that we are currently in. I call on INEC to ensure that this process is free and fair. Every means by which politicians can manipulate it, I plead with you to ensure that it is adequately uh, uh, taken care of. It is adequately mitigated. Because I say again, if we miss it this time, fellow Nigerians, if we miss it this time, a few, we may not have a country a few years down the line. Everything is down at the moment. We can't even talk about our economy. The insect, now, let me even shock you. Do you know that as at, as at 2021, $40.6 billion worth of foreign investment meant to come into the country has been diverted due to incessant insecurity in the country. Our students, our best minds, are traveling, are running away from the country because there is no concrete means. No, they can't find a concrete path to survival, to growth. Everyone is going on social media writing Jackpot Syndrome. I mean, if you check most of the people living in this country, it is not their wish to leave their fatherland and go to another man's land to survive. But you can't blame them because the things have gotten so bad. The only chance we have to effect real solid change is here. We can't afford to dilly-dally about it. We can't afford to continue to look at things through the prism of religion and ethnicity. Let us try something new. Let us look at capacity of the candidate. Let 
let us not say he's my brother, he's my this, he's from my village. Okay, let me let me even give an example. You know, the the current uh, leadership of the country is from a particular section of the country. Now, being that the person in charge of the country is from this part of the country, has it significantly improved the standard of living in that part of the country where the president comes from? No. So now we need to ask ourselves, we need to do deep introspection. We need to ask ourselves questions. Do we want a better Nigeria? Do we want a future where our children can stand up and say, I am a Nigerian? They can be proud to say that, I, that, that they are Nigerians. That is predicated on what we do now. Who we resort to vote now. You know, so the ball is so in many, our court. So many questions that we are, we are still searching for answers um, um, as, we, as we get towards the 2023 uh, elections. Uh, many Nigerians are uh, bedeviled on, on several other sides. We are trying to you know, find them some ray of hope uh, going forward. Uh, yes, we're talking about uh, campaigns and um, uh, wanting to ensure that campaigns are issue-based issue uh, going forward. Uh, maybe, uh, how do you balance character? How do you completely eliminate character in, uh, in campaigns? Because uh, you cannot take away the character of a man from his ability to perform. You cannot take the character of a man uh, away from his credibility. So these are also some very, very uh, serious concerns that we should also have in electing our next president or our next um, uh, our leaders uh, across, across all board. We, we should also consider the character of the man. Uh, you can not tell because we are trying to run away from, run, run into, uh, talk about issue based there. You will tell me that uh, maybe we have a rapist as a candidate for a political office and I would not want to consider that as a factor why you shouldn't get into office. How do we begin to balance character and issue-based uh, campaigning? First of all, a rapist will never have the opportunity to even be on the ballot in the first place because of what is a rapist. Now, like I said before, the only way you can know if a man is capable of keeping his promises is by looking at his past actions, by looking at his antecedents. So if the Nigerian people want to vote based on character, you see, if someone has, the question is, if someone has a terrible character, can that person be an effective leader? No, because leadership involves Understanding people, taking cognizance into the taking cognizance of the importance of relationship. If you have a terrible character, you can't maintain, you can't sustainably maintain relationships. You can't sustainably preside over a people, more or less a country of 218 million beautiful people like Nigeria. So, when the people want to select who they want to vote for, look deep inside yourself, do your research. This person that is, that is being paraded before me, based on his antecedents and his character, can I allow him to be CEO of my own company? Can I allow him to preside over the affairs of my company? Okay, can I allow him to preside over a trust fund? What billions of naira? I created for my children and my children yet unborn. Can I trust him to superintend over the affairs or the disbursement of funds from that account? You see, sometimes it is always good to, you know, understand perspectives. Take yourself and put in a particular situation. Then query yourself on that particular situation situation 
Now, several characters have come out to say they want to be president. First question you ask is, you don't ask, is he my, from my tribe or is he from my religion? Unfortunately, that is what a lot of Nigerians look at in order to vote. But I am telling you right now, we are way beyond that. We just can't use those two as a yardstick. Even though they are necessary, you know, in, when it comes to conflict avoidance and, um, you know, managing the, the ultra-diverse community that the country currently has, when it comes to choosing who will superintend over the affairs of the country, you see, the most important aspect of a country is its economy. The most important aspect of a country is its economy, right after its people. If we don't get the right candidate that, we'll, that we can trust, that we can stick our necks out for and say, based on this man's character, based on this man's antecedents, he can deliver. We can't afford to have candidates who are medically unfit for the rigors of the job. Nigeria is more or less the giant of Africa, the proverbial giant of Africa. We have the highest, as of 2022, the highest GDP in Africa. We're number one, about 500 or something billion dollars. If you are going to have a president that will superintend over a country this big, it has to be somebody who is medically and mentally fit for the job. Somebody with a consistent character. Somebody we can look into and say, this is what he achieved here, this is what he achieved here, this is what he achieved here. So these are very important factors that must be looked at in order to select the right candidate for the country. Well, what about the position of some of the candidates then, who are trying to, um, who are trying to pass their message across via town hall meetings uh, and direct involvement, direct interactions with prominent key stakeholders in society. Is this a way, an alternative yes. means of the people to listen to their plans for each sector, for each region and each individual? You see, like I said before, information is power. Now yeah. when you have a candidate who is open to holding town hall meetings, he is not camera shy, he is not afraid to be scrutinized by the people, he is not afraid to have his plans interrogated by the people is humble enough to make himself available at almost every major media outlet to be scrutinized. A candidate who is not afraid to have his past, you know, dissected, his past investigated, a candidate who is bold to state all that he has achieved and let the people know that they can also go and check and do their individual uh, uh, verification. I think going by the tenets of common sense, it's enough to tell you, it's enough to enlighten you, it's enough to give you the required information to know that this is a candidate that is going to walk his talk. If you are confident in your ability, you shouldn't be afraid of coming before the people. You shouldn't be afraid of having yourself scrutinized. So, I think it's, 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 it's simply straightforward. It is very, very straightforward. You see, Nigeria currently, according to um, UNESCO, as of 2022, we have 20 million out of school children. 20 million. Let that sink in. As a fraction, 
a significant fraction of our entire population. As at 2020, UNICEF um, um, disclosed that we had 10.5 million out-of-school children. So within, in fact, within a space of two years, that number has doubled. There is danger on the horizon. There is no time to sit on the fence. We must choose candidates that we walk. We must choose a candidate that will walk his talk. We must choose a candidate that is ready to solve these problems, num this country's numerous problems. I can't, uh, okay. On a recent trip to South Africa, I was lucky enough to spend time on safari and to see the beautiful animals that play a major role in driving tourism and the job it provides in South Africa. It also made me think of the tragedy of what is happening to our wildlife in Nigeria. These statistics are terrifying. There are over 300,000 elephants in Southern Africa, and they play a critical role in the natural ecosystem and our economy. But in Nigeria, fewer than 500 remain today. Elephants, lions, and other animals are poached or caught in wire snares set for illegal bushmeat. Nigeria has now become known as a hub of illegal wildlife trade and illegal bushmeat. The consumption of bushmeat can transmit diseases like Ebola, Lassa fever, monkeypox, and other deadly viruses. But we can change that perception by understanding that our animals are valuable and if properly protected, they can become a national asset. Our wildlife could ignite the tourism industry in Nigeria. So please say no to illegal bushmeat. Because poaching steals from us all. Welcome back. This is still News Up. We are gradually winding up the conversation. We are still speaking with Mabi Fai Chukwu. Um, still looking at the concerns around um, issue-based campaign uh, going towards uh, next year's election. Yes, Mabi, if you are still there. Yeah, it's so good to know you are still there. Uh, we're winding up the conversation right about now. Uh, let me ask you, we have had some infractions uh, going forward. I mean, where we, like we, like we have identified the fact that some, some parties are not campaigning uh, based on issues, but rather on character assassination and all of that. Do you think uh, there is anything uh, the Independent um, Electoral Commission could do around that, like INEC wielding the stick? Is there any provisions for uh, such parties to, have, to be called to order uh, by the electoral body? Mm. Well, I would encourage that, you know, the, uh, INEC being an electoral umpire has to be neutral. They are not even supposed, the only thing they are supposed to do is to put down, laid down guidelines. For example, when the campaigns should begin, um, the process, the, you know, the legal 
and uh, you know the, the 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 framework by which political parties should operate and uh, the framework by uh, by which they should uh, you know participate and uh, you know carry out activities within the electoral uh, context now they also have to be careful not to be seen as a partisan or seen as uh, dictating the tone or direction of conversations the only thing they have, I think, they have the right to do is to discourage or advise against violence, advice against, uh, you know, activities that will undermine the electoral process itself. They can only issue, ad I think they can only issue advisory and, uh, you know, alerts on anything involving the electoral, the laid down electoral framework and uh, process. Now, the only responsibility I think INEC has is to ensure that the process is free and fair. That Nigerians are able to exercise their civic duty without fear of, you know, getting attacked, without fear of, of getting disenfranchised. That is what I think is the true responsibility of INEC. I don't think they have the right to govern. I don't think it would be it would be uh, 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 it would it, the optics would be good if they are seen trying to govern the conversation or the the mood of campaign of political uh, parties in as much as that is said i think the onus lies on the people the people of nigeria the electorate to see through the uh, 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 the, the the facade being presented by political parties that resort to cheap character assassination um, propaganda. Because, I mean, propaganda is more or less false information, you know, in, in, in a way. You understand? So when you see a party engaging in mischief and, uh, you know, propaganda, it should, uh, give you, it should give you an idea of what you're to expect, you know, if such a party is in power. I'm not saying propaganda is is bad per se it's normal in the political process but when there is too much propaganda i mean that is where one must you know draw back and say is, is uh, uh, does this really look is this really what it seems could there be something hidden could there be something that is not being said so it's um it's very important for the nigerian people to understand that at this point in time, our country needs deliverance. The country is more or less in ICU. We need a surgeon, you know, a surgeon that is qualified, a doctor that is qualified to administer the right kind of medicine, you know, to this patient called Nigeria. Because Nigeria is suffering from a multiplicity of illnesses. Malaria, typhoid, crocro, different kinds of sicknesses. You understand what I'm trying to say? So we need somebody who understands how to treat these illnesses. The and baby. at least the right medication <laughs> that will save the country. From the baby. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are aware of... We are aware of malaria, the typhoid, but it's, it's that next one that you mentioned, the crocro, that I'm not quite sure. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> we are aware and of. Nigeria is suffering from crocro. <laughs> 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 well, thank you so much for making time yeah. to join us um, uh, on the program today. We appreciate it's you. A pleasure. And for staying civil, a uh, you're a media practitioner anyway, so um, you know, you've avoided um, <laughs> any... Um, swaying one way or the other. We don't know what parts uh, of the divide you'll be putting your thumbprint uh, uh, on election day. So thank you so much for joining us uh, on this discussion and we hope that this will actually translate to better conversations amongst political candidates who are vying for office, not just at the presidential level, at state level as well, local government, senatorial house of assembly, uh, all of those key elections all form a part of how Nigeria moves forward as a nation and engaging everyone who mm. intends to run for office along those policy lines as against the political divide they come from is very critical. Thank you so much. Do maybe you find yes. Jaku, who is a media entrepreneur. Thank you very much. From, uh, it's been a pleasure. On this topic. Thank you for making time again. 
All right, uh, that's as much as we have uh, on the show this morning. Quite interesting conversations, David. Yes, quite interesting conversations, quite insight, insightful conversations. Uh, we've been able to ask and um, ask some salient questions, and we'll be we'll sharing the waters. It's important uh, that we have a credible election uh, come 2023. It's not enough. It's just not enough for the beavers. It's the beavers. It's just not enough. There are other attitudinal, uh, you know, approaches that um, could also bring about credibility. Uh, to to the election, uh, intimidation, surgery, these are all the things that we should uh, speak against as we head for towards the, the poll uh, at next election. So, yeah. Definitely. And this is us doing our part to sensitize the public and ensure that the elections come 2023 are probably the best that Nigeria has ever seen, uh, the best that will produce leaders that are truly what the people desire. Not just truly what the people desire, the people who will actually lead Nigeria forward to prosperity. We need the leaders who will help us transition from this critical period that we are into a land of prosperity. Well, that's as much as you can take on the show today. I remain uh, Wilson Amoni. David? And I'm David Babadikadi. Before I go, a quick one. Uh, a big shout out to the Commissioner for Insurance, talking about Sunday. Sunday Thomas um, is a man dynamic, uh, has brought some dynamism to the insurance sector in Nigeria. We want to wish you uh, the very best even as you add them one more year uh, to your years. Sunday, Dar Sunday Thomas, rather, congratulations and a happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday. Tell us how you spent your anniversary yesterday outside of the program. Until next time, I remain Wilson Amoni. Have a fantastic Thursday. Bye for now.